Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Skyrocket Your BA Career with Certifications. I'm your host, Liva Randerbasson, and thank you for joining us today. Today's webinar is a public event. It is designed to deliver practical resources for you as you continue to grow your skill set and deliver value within your organization. When you join IIBA, you become a member of an international association dedicated to developing and promoting the business analysis profession with access to resources and community to support your development and career growth. At IIBA, we are all about uniting a community of professionals to create better business outcomes and to provide the tools to help you climb the ladder of success. And this webinar is brought to you by Adaptive US. Adaptive US provides CBAC, CCBA, ECBA, and Agile Analysis Certification training, question banks, study guides, simulators, flashcards, audiobooks, and digital learning packs. IIBA would like to thank Adaptive US for supporting us and the business analysis community. And today we have the pleasure of having two presenters. Ellen Mishra is the current president and principal trainer at Adaptive US and has over 25 years of professional experience in agile software development, requirements analysis, business analysis and governance, risk and compliance management. Ellen has authored over 20 publications on business analysis and has conducted over 200 workshops in business analysis, requirements management, agile, software project management, and Six Sigma. Laura McCoy is passionate and dedicated to both the profession and those who perform the skill set for the profession. Laura has over 22 years of experience performing BA skill set activities, as well as quality assurance, project management in industries including bank. I could not hear Leva for a moment, so I believe that um, I am supposed to start. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get going. Um, my name is Laura McCoy. I believe that um, she did an amazing job introducing me, um, and I am excited to discuss with you uh, today about how to uh, move your career forward using certifications. Um, again, thank you. Uh, we appreciate your time. We know that your time is valuable and we know that you're giving up some of your personal time to join us today. So we're very excited to have you here and to see the passion that you have for furthering your career and taking your business analysis profession um, in, you know, in your own hands. So that's pretty cool. Um, some additional information about IIBA. Uh, some of this was on uh, her slide, but I want to call some attention to a few things. There are so many registered members with IIBA now, and it continues to grow daily, weekly, monthly. Um, our community of business analysis has just grown more and more over time, which is amazing because what we do is challenging and can be frustrating. And so the more awareness there is and the more we're all on the same page and supporting one another, the stronger we become as a unit. So. Um, increasing that membership is very important to the growth and the maturity and the credibility of the profession. Uh, she shared the four levels of certification that are offered by IIBA at this time and Adaptive supports all four of those. So IIBA.org, she shared that with you. Um, there, it is a nonprofit organization, uh, so it's, it's solely focused on providing value to its members. So that's really amazing. And it's headquartered out of Canada. And they are, um, they are the only organization that truly focuses on the 
profession of business analysis, not focused on a small function of business analysis and not trying to mix multiple disciplines. They focus truly on business analysis and it's global. So you get an international perspective. Um, some of the cool benefits that I would like to highlight in addition to what Leva shared with you is um, lots of access to a ton of information. So many really amazing books online for free that you can access anywhere. Um, webinars, this one today is public, but they do have some members only webinars that are extremely educational and just really, really helpful to help you grow. Um, being a member gives you a discount on your exam fees. So it's, I mean, it's almost like getting Laura? a membership. Laura? Yes. Sorry, sorry, Laura. I think the slide deck is not moving. Can you please ask Leva or kind of do it yourself? Um, it's moving on. Hold on. I see it. Oh, wow. Thank you slide still. So maybe it's okay. not moving for some reason. There we ah, go. Ah, now it okay. moves. Yeah. Um, they, uh, their membership benefits, um, like I said, lots of webinars, lots of podcasts, the exam discount, um, and being a member, there are some local opportunities for networking. You don't have to be a member to take advantage of all of those, but the benefits you get even on a local level increase. Um, so it's, it's really amazing way to connect with all of your fellow BAs around the world. So why be certified? Um, statistics show that certified analysts earn approximately 16% higher, um, higher income. They also have a better opportunity for, for, for career progression. They're seen as focused and, and, and intentional on their career. It improves your capabilities going through the certification process. And the better you get at what you do, the higher your satisfaction. And those things is just a cycle. They feed one another and the capability and the improvement just grows and grows and grows. So it's a very, very valuable certification. And I can't get it to move forward. There we go. I think I'm having a delay in the connectivity. Okay, here we go. So comparing the IIBA certifications, um, as we talked about, there are four levels. The AAC is a little different, so I'll focus first on the tiered approach to the business analysis certifications for the career progression. ECBA is an entry certificate. It's great for people that are brand new to the career path, that are straight out of college, that are wanting to shift from, um, from another career into this career. It doesn't have any requirements on work experience or references, no requirements on education. Um, it does require 21 hours of professional development hours, which you can often get through your certification boot mm -hmm. camps, and that's often the best way to get that. Um, so, and those hours need to be in the last four years. So let's take that to CCBA. CCBA is where we start having, um, it's where we start having requirements on experience. So that's where we require 3,750 hours in the last seven years. Um, and what gets, where it gets a little bit tricky is understanding where those years need to apply. Um, so they have, we have six knowledge areas in the BABOC and Ellen will introduce you to those in just a moment, but your hours need to be spread as you see here. Two knowledge areas need to have at least 900 hours each or four knowledge areas need to have 500 hours. It just shows that you do have a focus in some areas of business analysis. And the PD hours are the same as the ECBA, where it also differs from ECBA is requiring two references. And the two references also, also applies to CBAP. So similar PD hours to ECBA, um, and no education requirement similar to ECBA, but it does expect a little bit from you that's different on PD hours and, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, on the BA work experience and the references. CBAP is a little bit more intensive because you need to show that you have a bit more experience. So now it's not just 900 hours in two knowledge areas, it's in four, and your hours increase up to 7,500 hours over the last 10 years. Now, if you take that and consider a 2,080 hour work year, it's approximately 35 to 45% of your work hour time 
spent on business analysis activities. And this doesn't require you to have the title of business analysis. What it wants to know is, are you doing the work of a business analyst? Are you enabling change as it relates to these knowledge areas? Um, it does require a bit more of professional development hours because it is a more complicated exam process. And then we have the AAC. It has the least requirements of all. Um, it doesn't have any requirements, actually. It just recommends that you have 21 hours of professional development. And it's also suggested that you have done an agile work for a couple of years so that you can, so that the content makes sense to you. So moving forward, let's talk about comparison of the certifications from the perspective of cost and the exam experience. So depending on where you live in the world, um, the fees are gonna range. Everything is based on the career progression version of the certifications. It goes off of the Babock version three. AAC focuses on the Agile extension. You can see the fee variation. Um, CCBA, CBA, P cost the same, and they're a bit more than ACBA. AAC is kind of in the middle. Um, the exam experience. ECBA is an online experience. You can do it from anywhere, but it is proctored. So you must have a situation where someone can observe you via your webcam or something similar. CCBA and CBAP are on site at a Prometric Center. It's an actual exam center that you go to, just like if you're clepping an exam for a university. You go to the testing center, you have to check in, they um, they ensure that you go in with very little on you. Um, it's a very very it, it's a very it's a very controlled environment. AAC is also online, very similar to ECBA, and you'll notice that ECBA and AAC have the same recommendation for preparation effort on your part. And then CCBA and CBAP progress in the hours expected because the level of complexity of the testing experience increases at each level. So that's something really cool um, that IIBA offers. There are other certifications for business analysis out there throughout the world, but IIBA is the only one that truly supports a business analysis career progression. Um, so the certifications and the fact that they are leveled um, lends to a feeling of professionalism and career paths and growth opportunities. So it's really, really great for business analysts. Um, we do have six steps that we recommend for your experience. Um, you'll enroll for a program with Adaptive US, um, attend training. You'll study for a while. Sorry, that is advancing quite quickly. Um, you'll study for a bit, prepare yourself. You will submit your application. You will do some practice model questions, and then you will eventually sit for the exam. Um, so some of the experience here, in just a moment, I'll be handing it over to Ellen, who's going who's gonna to walk you through a lot of exam tips um, and help you with some things specific to the exam process. And he's an amazing resource for that because he was engaged in the exact actual exam committee. So he's an amazing resource for that. What I will leave you with is an idea of the spread of the weeks that are associated with this. This is kind of for CCBA and CBAP. ECBA, this timeline will be kind of condensed and you won't have to do all of the things here. Ideally with any of the certifications, because it's truly, I mean, it's not about what you know in your world. It's about what does the international community expect you to know and, and how do they expect you to understand or apply that knowledge as it relates to international best practice. So it's very helpful and it's, it's, it increases your chances of success greatly if you have some instructor-led training with people that are familiar with the exam process. Um, now, I personally wasn't engaged in the exam committee, but I have been certified and I have been engaged quite intimately with IIBA since I found out they existed and got my certification. Um, but LN and another individual in our environment, his name is Peter, they were both involved in the exam committee and um, the Peter, who you would also have access to, helped with, uh, he was part of the authoring group that wrote the bat box. So some really amazing resources that it would engage in instructor-led training. Um, then you have uh, week four, you would start working on preparing your work experience, providing your references, 
Um, and that only applies to CCBA and CBAP, the other two that does not apply. Um, and then ultimately when you're done with, w done with your instructor led training or obtaining the, um, or obtaining your professional development hours, you'll, you'll provide that and then you'll finalize your application. Uh, application approval is typically fairly quick. Um, and then once you've been approved, and actually throughout this whole time, you'll be preparing things, you will, um, you'll be preparing yourself, and when you are ready to schedule your exam, you'll pay your exam fee, and then you will ultimately take the exam. So that kind of gives you a high-level idea of the certification process. Um, now I will pass it off to LN, who will share with you um, based on his significant experience with the exam process, he'll share with you some tips and tricks on how to be as successful as possible in the certification exam process. Ellen? Uh, thank you, Laura. Thank you all for joining the webinar. Uh, my name is Ellen. I think you heard my name from Laura and others. And I'm probably among the very few business analysts um, who have completed all four certifications from IABA. So I did my ECBA, CCBA, CBAP, and AAC. So all four exams I have taken. And I have possibly helped close to 500 professionals to complete their certification journey with us. Um, so I do receive a lot of inputs from many of our past participants about how they prepared, what worked well for them. So I'm going to share things which are which I personally experienced, and of course I heard and uh, talked to many BAs. So let's look at each one of them and see how do we make best use of our preparation and exam time as well. Uh, how do I scroll down? Can I? Okay. Uh, so the first thing that we need to understand is Babok has 30 tasks grouped into six knowledge areas. So here is one kind of a mind map we have provided. There are actually more deeper mind maps, which I will take a look at. Um, uh, would it be possible to make me a presenter at some time, Liva? Maybe towards the end of the presentation, I would like to show something from our portal. That time I'll take over. So if you look at the map, we clearly understand that there are tasks which are serial. There are tasks which are parallel. Each task produces some kind of a deliverable, which typically feeds into subsequent tasks. So when I showcase the mind map, I will show you the diagram for that. Please understand purpose of each task very well, because a lot of time you'll be asked what a task tries to achieve, um, what kind of techniques can help it achieve those objectives. So from that perspective, understanding the purpose of the task is very, very important, especially at the level of ECBA examination. Okay, can I move to the next slide? Okay. So let me pick up some of this. Oh, this is what I exactly said just now, showing no purpose of each task. And please memorize tasks within a knowledge area. Um, again, I would warn you, do not try to buy heart Babok. That's not a great approach. Babok is a very large document and trying to memorize each technique, each task, each input, each output is a horrendous job. So please refrain from doing any of those kind of memory hogging activity, which some people advise. And I really wonder why they advise such a thing. It is not required to remember exactly every input, every output, every technique for a task. As long as you understand the purpose of tasks and strengths of each technique, you can actually do lot of mapping yourself. Then coming down, uh, this is what I was telling you. Please understand a typical BA flow. Although Babok says that tasks can be repeated, all that still 
if we understand a typical BA flow, it will help us to understand which task produces what output and that output, where is it used? So the mind map itself will guide you for inputs and outputs, which I will show it to you in a few minutes time. Coming further down, there are 50 techniques in BABOP, which is a pretty large amount. So obviously, what we need to do is to understand strength of each technique. What is a technique good about? What can it do very well? And obviously, when we start understanding the techniques and their strengths, we can actually apply them to particular tasks. Uh, we do have a simple mind map for techniques as well, where we group the techniques based on their common behavior and so that it is helpful for you to understand a lot of information about a group of techniques than trying to understand one technique at a time. For those of you who are going for CBAP, knowing modeling is very important, especially things like activity diagram, data models, state diagram, and use case model. So these four models are very vital for you to understand because at CBAP level, modeling becomes an important part. Coming further down, I would always recommend all of you to take enough practice tests. Um, the question patterns are difficult, especially at a higher level like CBAP. Um, so if you have done enough practice tests and you have reviewed your answers, then you get a feel about what is the way Babok thinks about a lot of things. Um, some of us might have practiced in a particular environment and our environment might have taught us to think in a particular way. So for example, if you are working in an organization where approvals are mandatory, so you may tend to think that approvals are mandatory in all circumstances or a ink signature is needed on every requirement. But that is not the expectation in Babok. Babok actually accepts things which are informal, verbal. So you have to understand Babok very well and then answer questions as per Babok, not as per your past experience. And this could actually work quite against people who have spent a very long time in a particular organization because their method or way of thinking could be completely driven by their organizational practice, which may not be the best practice, or maybe it's suitable to their organization context, but Babok is looking at a far more broader holistic concept, which could apply in any sector, in any situation, in any kind of industry. So please do as many tests as you can. And generally, we recommend taking at least four simulation tests before you go for your final exam. The reason being you get an idea about how to time yourself well. These are very intense tests. You're trying to answer anywhere between 100 to 130 questions in just about three, three and a half hours time. So you don't really have the luxury of to think uh, and not time yourself properly. If you don't do a proper timing check, maybe you miss out. And of course, analyze the answers provided by the training institute or wherever you have taken the training, uh, because the institute, like us, we would always provide an explanation for the answers. Those are considered right and those which are not considered right. Coming further down, this is an interesting question. When should you take the exam? In general, we advise you to take the exam after a short break because that allows you to refresh your thoughts, not be in a high pressure situation when you are going for the test. In general, try to take the test in the second half if you get a slot. 
because suppose you have to move 30 miles or 40 miles to reach the exam center and you have put it in the morning half, maybe you find it difficult to reach the place. So having it in the second half always makes sense. Um, but again, it depends on your personal preference. Some people say, I'm better at taking exams in the morning half, then please do. But make sure that you are close enough to the exam center and you can, you can reach the exam center at least an hour prior to the test timing. And generally do not try to cram the guidebook just before the exam. It usually is a counterproductive strategy. And also, take a good night's rest. Because if you do not take enough rest, maybe you will feel dizzy during the exam hall and that will actually work against you. So these are some of the very common test taking tips, whether you are taking CBAP or AAC or CCBA or ECBA, for everything this should apply. Of course, for ECBA and AAC, you are a little bit at an advantageous position because you are taking it from your home. But for those two tests, again, make sure that you have proper internet bandwidth available to you. You have a power backup so that you do not run into a situation where something fails in the middle of the exam process. Okay, now I'm going to discuss about some test taking tips like what I told you just before was about how do we prepare for the test, but now we would look at how do we actually, uh, when we are in the exam center, what are the things that we should keep in mind? It's always true, stay cool. Um, anybody who gets tensed during the exam process, they generally don't do well. Um, I've seen ample number of participants who are really good, but they become so worried, so anxious during the test that they don't perform to their potential. So please do not um, kind of get pressurized. And some of the things that helps us to understand is that some participants have said that the first few questions can always be uh, seem harder to you. So maybe that's there to kind of make you a little nervous. So don't get nervous by looking at first few questions. Maybe you, if you don't understand the question, just kind of mark it and then move forward. Do not get stuck to a question, especially for those who are taking CBAP, the questions are fairly long, now the questions are difficult. So it might so happen that you get stuck to a question. If you do that, you lose uh, time from preparation usually try to cover at least 40 to 45 questions per hour. Uh, that's the usual speed which uh, we are looking at. For ECBA, it's 50, but that's a simpler exam. For both CCBA, um, then CBAP and AAC, the typical range is about answering 45 to 50 questions per hour. Then in the first go, try to answer what you know and flag what you don't know. And then of course you can come back and review your questions. That provision is there. Uh, one more thing we should remember that in the pro metric system, you have something called a strike out option, which means if you feel there are options which are completely wrong as per your knowledge, you can actually strike them out. So that is something very helpful then let's remember that we have to choose the most appropriate option, not just correct option. The question may have two or three options or even sometimes four options, all of them technically being correct. But what you have to choose is the most appropriate option. Say for example, if I give you a question uh, which is option is answer and use case. Use case contains scenarios, but the question could be actually looking at scenarios than use case. So you have to answer scenarios, not use case. Although technically use case also meets the criteria, but the question setter is looking for, are you able to really identify when a scenario should be used and when a use case would be used? 
then please remember um, all international tests, including all tests from IIBA are based on the guidebook and the answers have to be as per the guidebook. Sometimes it may so happen that you do not agree what is written in BABOK, which is perfectly fine, uh, but we will keep those debates and discussions outside the exam hall, not within the exam hall. Okay, then there are some more generic tips which I would like to give, uh, especially for CBAP, the questions can really be long and of course they can have diagrams. Even for CCBA questions, also you may have questions with diagrams. So look at the uh, diagrams present in BABOK and please try to understand those diagrams in detail, especially with respect to models like class diagram, uh, what is include, what is extend, uh, what is generalization, those kind of concepts you try to clarify. And I would also say that on some topics, of course, all of us would be weak. Like when I took CBAP, uh, my understanding of UML was quite low because I came from the ERP background and in ERP background, you do not use UML like what you do in application development. So for the topics that you are weak about, please read a little bit more from another book in IIB library. Maybe you are weak in financial analysis, then read some content on financial analysis beyond BABOK, because that will help you to make your understanding better. And remember, as I said, multiple options are always plausible, but you, we have to choose only one option. And the last point, as I said, usually BABOK does not give any prescriptive answer saying somebody needs to have a five years experience to do business analysis job. Nowhere in BABOK it is written like that. In very few places you will find an exact number um, or size being recommended in BABOK. For most cases, BABOK is very flexible with respect to the rigor or time frame for any task. Uh, so if you find any question which says uh, this must be done uh, within 10 days or something like that, you can avoid those answers because BABOK nowhere prescribes a very specific number. Then coming further down, as I said before, always flag questions which you don't know the answer and come back and review. And uh, remember that you should mark a question. There is no negative marking in the test. So skipping a question doesn't make sense. So even if you don't know the answer and you like the letter B or C or D or A, whatever letter you like, uh, please put an answer. Maybe you are lucky and you get the credit for that question. Um, as I said before, the question, uh, the Prometric system does allow you to eliminate choices. So please eliminate the wrong choices so that you are left with lesser number of choices to deal with. So instead of four choices, maybe you are just dealing with two choices. So that makes it easier for you to answer the question. Uh, Laura, would you like to take over from here? A couple of slides, then I'll come back. Hello, Sorry, Laura. I'm uh, here. Maybe a couple of slides you can take over. I'll come back. Yeah. Okay. Um, so some critical success factors to your exam process. Um, it's important when you're studying and when you're attempting to learn to have really high quality content, preferably with individuals who can help you understand that content and give you real life examples to relate to. So with that, um, what Adaptive does is we have a proven approach for helping people prepare. And part of that is taking you from the beginning of the process all the way to the end and even post-test. It's very possible that you will have post-test questions. Um, my apologies, it is still trying to advance too quickly. Um, also having effective model questions um, is extremely helpful. Uh, and that's one of the things that you get with our 
with our exam simulations. The exam simulation helps you prepare for the kind of questions that you will have. It presents it in a way that's similar to what you will experience in the real life. So not only is it testing your knowledge, it's also preparing you psychologically for the experience. And throughout the entire process, you get exam success tips um, specific to the content that you're learning at that time. Um, so taking that through, why Adaptive? Well, we are a premier partner, as is evidenced here in this conversation. We provide a success guarantee, and we are confident with that because we have a really high success rate for others who have taken the test through us. Um, and one of the reasons for that is the level of support you get throughout the whole process. Um, we guarantee that our sessions will run. And as I mentioned earlier, your trainers, your, uh, the, the faculty providing you education, we are very engaged with IIBA. Now, if you're curious, um, our Succeed Online Learning Platform, it, um, you can register for free to try it out. There are tons of videos and set, there's, a, there's an, a great study guide. It's almost like a collect guide similar to what you have for certain novels in school. Um, and the questions, there are little question banks specific to each knowledge area. And each of those have practice questions and there are multiple versions of them. And then you also have multiple exam simulators. Um, the more exam simulation you do, the higher the possibility of success that you have. Uh, in our online learning platform, uh, you will also find some really cool mind maps that Ellen has made. It makes it very visual and makes it very easy to remember. There are lots of audiobooks that you can listen to in the car or wherever you would like. Um, Leva mentioned the flashcards. We've been giving you the prep tips. You get those throughout. And then we also have this library that has advanced BA topics for those that are wanting to even go beyond the understanding for the certification. And it has some templates that are very usable. Um, for real life BA work. Uh, one of the things we would like to mention is we have an International Women's Day offer for women professionals, and it's an additional $50, $50 off for all registrations for March of this year. Um, so please keep that in mind, and we want to show um, we want to show our appreciation for those that do this. Also, um, for people that um, attend our workshops they will get a free exhaustive exam tip document specific to their exam level. And you can check that kind of stuff out at adaptiveus.com uh, forward slash IBA-training. Um, so those are some pretty cool announcements that we have to make. Um, I would like to thank you for your time. I believe Ellen would like to share something uh, from his desktop. So I will pass that back to Ellen. Uh, maybe I'll just... Uh... Leva, can I present from my desktop or how do I do that? Uh, I still don't see. Ah, oh, okay. So maybe I'll spend five minutes in taking you quickly through the Succeed platform because that's something interesting for all of you. Um, even if you are not our student, it's fine. You still get fairly good content as part of free offering itself. Um, so in the study guide section, we have mind maps. I was just showing you uh, a pretty neat task mind map, uh, a pretty neat techniques mind map. Um, and then there is the study guide, which is fairly a concise version of the Babok book as such. Uh, written in a language which you can understand much better. Uh, we have an exhaustive glossary document, uh, the certification tips, there are application simulator, um, then there's a preparation plan, all that goes in there. Then we also have an interesting product called Babok Workbook or Business Analysis Workbook. So for a minute, I will show you the workbook. How does it look like? And those of you who have a um, little less experience with business analysis, this is a fantastic way to test your knowledge of Babok using a case study approach. So what we have done, we have a 10 page case study, which I can show you. So here is a nice case study prepared for you. Uh, it's about 10 pages. 
And using this case study, you actually answer the questions as per Babok. So even this can be helpful for senior BAs as well, uh, because it kind of uh, rehearses your thoughts, your ideas about Babok. So when you do this, it will help you to kind of understand Babok concepts very well and keep them in your mind for a very long time. So this is quite a unique product that we offer. Um, and then of course there are estimation cases and a lot of summary documents as well. Uh, in question bank, as Laura said, we have about now maybe close to 4,000 questions now. We keep adding new questions to the question bank. Um, so across the standards, ECBA, CCBA, CBAP, AAC, um, fundamental skill-based, um, scenario-based, case-based, and simulations. Um, audio books are again interesting product which you can download on your phone and listen to them. Uh, in flashcards, we have done good amount of uh, um, gamification. So if you want to play some gravity game, you can do that as well. Um, so there are nice gamifications done here. Presentations are the faculty presentations. And library is again another unique product with us uh, where we give you close to 100 business analysis templates, uh, which you can use as part of your business analysis work. Uh, so this is what uh, the platform we call it as succeed and obviously helping you to succeed in your IABA certification examinations. Uh, that's about it from my side, Laura. And Liva, we are open to take questions now. Liva? Hello, it's Terry Lynn. It looks like Leva's having some difficulty with uh, sure, sure. coming sure, off Terry. mute. So I'm going to jump in, okay? Leva, please feel free to just jump in when, when you get your mute sorted out. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just going to start at the top of the question box, and we have lots and lots of questions today. And uh, Julia has said that I found it very hard to provide employment slash project history in the CBAP application for so many years back. Is there a tip on how to simplify that? Um, I have Laura, one Yeah, go ahead, Laura. I have one for that. Um, so projects that are quite large that span multiple years, those can be a single entry. But what I did when I applied, um, because actually the certification process now is much simpler than when I did it. So when I did it and you tried to insert something in between, it got really, you had to redo, I had to restart multiple times. So what I learned is if I have a bunch of small projects, um, let's say I'm a business analyst and I get, I, I'm, I'm assigned a lot of smaller projects with just one or two large projects. So the one or two large projects get their own entry. The others I lump into an annual report, right? I say, okay, so this year I worked on various projects from these functional areas, and this is the time I spent collectively for that whole year um, for those projects. Uh, so that's the way I did it to simplify it. It greatly, because I mean, I had, at any given point, I was working on 17 projects at once, and that would be miserable trying to report, you know, hundreds of projects. So I lumped small ones into an annual bucket, and large ones had their own record that may have spanned multiple years. I hope that helps. Excellent. Thank you, Laura. So the next question is, is it necessary to complete any prerequisite certification for the ACC? AAC, I apologize. No, it's an absolute standalone examination. Um, you can take any of the examinations uh, as long as you meet the criteria for that examination. So you can actually attempt CBAP directly if you qualify for it. Uh, there's no need for you to go through ECBA, CCBA, and then CBAP. But if your qualification is very much in the borderline case, uh, we would generally recommend someone to try CCBA before they go for CBAP because two things. One, CCBA is a relatively simpler exam to go through and you have something in your hand. 
um, than just trying CBAP directly and not being successful with CBAP. Okay, and could you possibly define what client means in the context of references? And I apologize, I'm just sort of going through the list, so we may be jumping around sure. a little bit. <laughs> The client would be someone for whom you did business analysis work. So for example, I worked with Infosys. My client was not strong because I consulted or I did my business analysis work at Nordstrom, although I was employed in Infosys. Okay. Does knowledge, er do knowledge areas refer to the domain we work as a BA? Usually don't, uh, she doesn't see people uh, change their domain when they are working on, um, they're working on, uh, unless their experience is less than 10 years. Uh, Laura, would you like to take that? Can you please repeat that question for me? Sure. Oh, sorry, just have to scroll up. It's a teeny tiny little screen. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to look at it too. Yeah, do knowledge areas refer to the domain we work in as a BA? <clears throat> no, um, domains are, knowledge areas are the areas of functional capability that, is, that you are expected to perform. Every single project will have some level of every single knowledge area because you always have to plan, you always have to talk to people, that's solicitation and collaboration. You're always looking at what's the current problem, what's the desired future and what is, what is the gap, that's strategy analysis. You're always defining requirements to solve for that problem and you're always identifying solutions and you should hopefully be checking to make sure that the solution met the need. So you do all knowledge areas every single time. Domain as a business analyst is usually, a domain can be a functional area of the organization you focus in. Maybe you focus on the functional domain of accounting or HR. Maybe you do all functional domains within a specific vertical, so a specific industry domain like uh, oil and gas or education. Um, and as you mature in your career, there's a, there, you will either get truly fully specialized or you will become more of a strategic generalist where you're just Mikey at the cereal table, those of you that know live cereal, and you get everything that's too complicated or not understood, and, and you can jump into anything over time, and you can work in any functional or vertical domain. I hope that answers the question. That's terrific. Thank you, Laura. Um, there was actually, there's quite a few questions around practice tests and uh, and how they how they actually access them before before an exam. So is that it, like those, I'm assuming that those things are included after they've uh, paid the fee, they will receive those um, sample tests, et cetera? True, true. So we have different, mainly two levels of uh, question bank access. So at a very essential level, there is a 750 questions. And at the advanced level, it's about 2000 questions. And somebody can buy the essential plan as part of the training and upgrade the question bank alone. That's also a possibility. That's great, just thank you. Different levels of products, yeah. Super. Okay, I've got a question from Raphael who has taken the exam twice and unfortunately hasn't passed. Um, the last one he said was, all, was, was painful because he failed two knowledge areas. However, um, what he wants to know, what can he do differently? Laura, would you like to take? So um, one of the things that, and I don't, it would be hard to answer that question without some additional context, right? Like, so the first time versus the second time, did he, did he fail two knowledge areas that he had failed previously or were they new knowledge areas that he failed? So that would impact the answer. If it is, I would assume that the two knowledge areas that he failed the second time were also failed the first time. And the only thing that we can recommend that they do is something that Ellen mentioned earlier in the session, right? So going through, if you have not had an opportunity to leverage people like, like what we have, and you have, you've tried to do the self-study or you've tried to leverage um, a resource for training you that was not successful in training you, then you know work with Adaptive to do so. And we have a really high pass rate. Um, for those individuals that have enough experience but don't have enough experience in some specific things that IIBA expects, 
like like Ellen mentioned before, find those weak spots. So in your two knowledge areas that you have failed, go into IIBA and look at look try to find content that covers those two knowledge areas and spend some decent time teaching yourself those elements or find some um, some functionally specific classes that can help you understand them if you're trying to study on your own and it's just not working. Excellent tips. Thanks, Laura. So after the pra taking practice exams, how do I know I am ready? Is there a passing mark to, to reach on the practice exams? Uh, we do. We generally expect you to score 85%. Um, on the practice tests, mainly because we want to cover about 10% variation in what you do in practice and in real situation. Because in general, your performance in the exam center would be lower than what you do in the practice test. It's mainly because you are under pressure. And all of us have exam fear. Even if we have taken 100 tests, the 101th test will have some impact on us so that is why we generally recommend if you get 85 percent plus in the practice test you are doing quite well super thank you ellen so there was mention of a free trial and how long does that last uh it's for a week but it it actually gives you a complete simulation uh so if you're looking at ccba you get 130 questions if you're looking at cbap you get 120 questions which are fairly exhaustive. And I think uh, we could price it itself. Then you have some, some other study guide material, other things also available to you at no cost. Thank you, Ellen. I think there's, there's been a number of questions around which, which certification you should take first. Like, should you take the ECBA before CBAP or CCBA? Uh, take the CCBA before ACC. So, is is there a, a sort of a natural progression of what an individual should start off with? Okay, maybe I can take this question, Laura. If you have no experience in performing business analysis tasks, go for ECBA. No questions asked. Okay. Uh, so for somebody who has no experience, the only certificate that should, they should look at is ECBA. If you have about two years of business analysis experience in agile related projects, AAC is a good certification to take. Uh, but if you are very keen on learning BABOC and a little broad understanding of business analysis, not only in agile environment, but in all kinds of environments, then with about three years business analysis experience, you should look at CCBA. And although IIBA says five years of BA experience for CBAP, in general, we recommend a little more uh, because the question pattern for CBAP has been harder with V3 uh, and somebody without say six years of experience may find it difficult to um, kind of go through CBAP, although people have crossed at five. Uh, but if you are just in the borderline case, we would still recommend you to go for CCBA. But if you have a clear six years business analysis experience, look at CBAP because that's the gold standard. It's the most recognizable standard today for business analysts. Uh, so CBAP is a pride uh, certification to have. Thank you, Ellen. I'm just, I'm scrolling down through the box. It's wonderful. You've answered many of the questions in your explanations that have, that have, that are covered off uh, some of the things that came into the question box. Oh, and someone's asking about, are there any free online courses for ECBA that provide, uh, provides PDUs? Um, one of the things that, individuals that are participating in today's webinar and any webinars, whether they're recorded or live with IIBA, you can use those um, uh, use those as part towards your, um, your PD hours. 
Um, I actually included that in, I sent a, some information to the entire audience. And if you have any questions about certification and, and hours and things like that, if you go to our website, just uh, and check out, there's a certification page. And then within the certification page, there are um, many like frequently asked questions that probably a lot of your questions will be answered there. I think maybe I would answer this uh, very typical question or request we get. The, a lot of people are very interested in getting the PD hours, which is the requirement for taking the examination. And in fact, for ECBA, uh, you can self-study. There is no mandatory requirement to go for a training. So you can have a copy of Babok and study yourself. But the chance of your success is very, very low. It is very difficult to understand Babok without a good facilitator explaining that to you. Um, I'm a little kind of sad to say that, but the study guide, the Babok guide isn't a very easy document to read. It's 500 plus pages, intense. Okay, so if you really want to complete your certification, just do not look at only PD hours. You may be able to organize the PD hours in some kind of way, or maybe there is a provider which gives you at a very low price the PD hours, but it's not going to make you successful. One, two, your understanding will remain weak. So the two aims that we try to provide you is to make you a better BA along with being certified. It's not only our aim is to just get you one certificate on the wall. That's not the intent. The intent is by the time you walk out of the workshop, you would actually be able to perform your role better at your workplace. So have that confidence and all the faculties that you meet with us would have minimum 20 years of business analysis experience. We do not hire anybody less than 20 years as a faculty and 20 years as a BA, not, not just any experience. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that approach somebody collecting PD hours through some mechanism. It doesn't help. Thank you, Ellen. Well, we're almost at the top of the hour, so we've got time for one more question, and this one hopefully will be a fairly short answer. And what score is required to pass the CBAP? <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> would you like to answer? <laughs> because we don't know, and IAP doesn't tell us. Here I am, I, I'm with IIBA, and I don't know the answer to that question either. <laughs> I, I just want to let everyone know that there, there were many, many, many questions in the uh, question box, and we thank you so, so very much for sending those. And what we'll do is after the webinar, we will we, we'll make sure that they're sent to Laura and Ellen, any that are sort of more that Adaptive US can answer, and then any that are more pertaining to IIBA, we'll make sure that they get answered from, from our side as well. And oh, I just uh, want to take Terry Lynn. Yes, I did. Um, I, why, while uh, while we were doing some of that question and answer, some of the things that were very IIBA specific, like um, do I have to take this before that, or you know, things or the P, what does KA mean? I went ahead and answered some of those and sent the answer to everyone so everyone can see the answer. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that, Laura. And this is just a wonderful opportunity for us here at IIBA to thank you and Ellen and Anne, who is, is in the background. And thank you so, so very much for, for giving us all this wonderful information about how to move forward with certifications. And we hope that everyone that's on the webinar has enjoyed this presentation. And to please remember that it is being recorded and it'll be put up on IIBA's uh, website within five business days. And I've sent that link to everyone in the chat box. There's also handouts in the, in the handout section. There is a PDF copy of the presentation as well. So thank you all so, so very much. And I hope you all have, all have a wonderful day or afternoon or evening, wherever it is that you are. Bye now. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you.